Hey guys, Alex here from Zico Tech, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of the latest developments that our ZLab team has been working on, mainly the new upgrades to our backtesting tools, specifically the Performance and Trend Builder. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Trend Builder is one of the advanced tools offered within the ZLab section of the VIP Club, and you get full access to it if you are a VIP member. So if you haven't joined Zcode yet, then this would be a great time for you to do so. Now, in case you didn't know, Zcode system offers an entire suite of automated systems and VIP picks that are generated automatically. Our Zcode systems are profitable in their own right, and they're completely automated when it comes down to the selection process. But let me ask you this. How would you like to create your own profitable sports betting systems using our database of historical data and team statistics that are available at your fingertips? If that was a big resounding yes I heard, then here's what we've got for you. Introducing the new and improved Trend Performance Builder. This advanced tool allows you to analyze existing systems and trends and create your own system using a whole list of parameters and conditions which you can then fine tune to improve your systems over time. And for those of you who love crunching numbers, sports stats, and even if you're the kind who prefers to build and backtest your own sports betting systems, then you'll be glad to know that all our backtest tools have been upgraded with improved features and performance. As you can see here, we have many more backtesting tools coming up for you. So if you're excited about this, then let's get started. First, let's take a detailed look at the Trend Performance Builder itself. You can either go to this link directly or find the Trend Performance Builder listed within level three of the ZLab section right here. You see, you have Performance Trend Builder. Okay, so in the latest update, we have not only enhanced the functionality of the Performance Trend Builder and its design, but we've also optimized its performance, added a floating bar for quick access to main features, which I'll demonstrate to you soon, and even a quick search bar to find settings faster, amongst many other improvements. For those of you who've been with Zico for a while now and are familiar with the way our Trend Builder used to look, you'll notice the tool has come a long way from the simplistic interface it had before. And there are so many new options that have been added over the years. So for the first added feature, I want to bring your attention to the new floating bar, which you'll find at the top right corner, just as you scroll down past the Trend Builder title. That's the floating bar. Now, all the buttons here are intuitive and easy to understand. The first two arrows allow you to instantly scroll up or down to the important sections at the extreme ends of this Trend Builder page. All right, so we click this and it takes you all the way down to this important row of buttons. You know, the up and down arrow keys will basically help you to skip to the various sections which are important across the entire detailed back test. So I'll show you how to use that later on. So for now, let's just go right back up. Okay, and right next to that, now we have this share button, which is really important. Once you've created a good and profitable trend of your own, you'll have the option to edit and share your settings, even with our ZLab team for validation. And once your system has been verified and approved, it'll then become available to our entire Z code community. Now that's really cool if you're an advanced sports better and you'd like to share your expertise with the rest of our community. Now the button right next to that, this button allows you to save the systems you create with your own trend names, which you can then load up later. So let's say for now, I'm going to name this ZTech test trend. All right. I'm going to save that. All right. And then right next to the save button is the load option which allows you to load up settings from other trends that you've saved before. So over time, you'll have a whole list of trends that you'll create and these will be saved here. And at any point in time, you can just simply click that particular trend and then click load in order to load the settings from that trend. So that makes it very convenient. All right, now right next to the load option 
is this brand new feature called the Trend Creation Wizard, which will assist you in the process of creating your own profitable trends with the Performance Trend Builder. I'm going to show you how to use the wizard in just a bit. But before that, let me just quickly show you. We also have this search bar here, which is similar to this bar right at the top of the tool. And either of these bars allow you to quickly find any of the settings or parameters that you're specifically looking for. And finally, the important process button, which will start the backtest process and then present you with a complete analysis and full statistics for the trend that you've created. So that's as far as what we have here on the new floating bar. Let's take a look at the Performance Trend Builder tool itself. There are so many filters and criteria to choose from, and some of these conditions might even change depending on which sport you choose. We're not going to go through each and every one of these criteria, but I would like to show you the most important conditions or parameters which you should focus on when using the wizard to create your own trend, as well as the additional options and buttons which you'll find right at the end of this tool. So to go right to the end, we can either press the end key or barely I just use the down arrow here and that'll take you straight down to the bottom of the page where we saw this row of the important functions and buttons. Many of these buttons are of course the same as the buttons that you have on the floating bar. So process, same. Edit and share settings, same as the share option here. Okay, so right now, since we haven't really chosen any criteria yet, we don't really have an active trend per se. But just to quickly show you how this all works, there's this drop down here which allows you to choose or basically upload popular trends. And what this allows you to do is to choose from a, a list of some of the best system trends that are available for you to backtest or experiment with. So we've got quite a few of them here and I'm gonna go with this one here which is Arnaud's NHL Pluton trend. So let's just click that and as soon as you do so, you'll see this message which says you're using a preset with saved signals from the predefined period, which is fine. And another thing that happens is as you scroll back up, you'll notice that many of these options have suddenly been updated with the actual settings for this specific trend. So that's really cool because it allows you to experiment with these settings and modify them or improve on them as you wish. I'm gonna talk more about all of these options and filters and conditions that we have here on the tool. The most important thing I need to show you is how to use the wizard. So let's go ahead and launch the wizard using this icon on the floating bar. Now, I need you to remember that there are 11 steps to the wizard and we're gonna go through them one by one. So this is the very first step to select a sport. So on the very first page, you have the sport you can choose to build your system trend upon. You can only choose one sport for the trend because the backtest and analysis will work across historical data for that specific sport. Oh yeah, and this is one thing that I must mention. You know, once you're done creating a trend of your own, your personal trend can actually produce signals based on the conditions and filters that you choose either through this wizard or on the performance trend builder itself. Okay, so if there are any new games that come up which satisfy the trend rules or backtest conditions, then it'll generate a signal and send that to you. And it can also notify you using push messages to your web browser or even push notifications directly to your cell phone or mobile devices like tablets. All right, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just choose NHL. You have this entire selection of sports available to you. That's what we have historical data for all of these sports in Z codes, so that's cool. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and click next, move on quickly to this next step, which is select when to bet. And you have all these filters based on, you know, the number of games, or you could use a date filter to limit the trend backtest to a specific time period in the past. You can also choose from the days of the week, and the same goes for 
the months of the year. If there are any specific months that you want to avoid, you can just simply uncheck any of them. You know, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna switch this to the last 500, okay? And let's move on. Here on the third step, now this is important because this determines the type of pick that your trend is going to be focusing on. Now this is where you'll find the various types of picks or predictions that are generated by our Z code systems. And if you click on any of these options here, you'll see a detailed explanation for each of them to the right. And one thing you must understand is that the process of creating a trend or even how the statistical data is used in the backtest, all of these are very closely tied to the recommendations and odds or star ratings and other vital statistics that are seen on the VIP picks page. And let me show you what that looks like. All right, so here on the VIP picks, I'm gonna go straight down to the VIP picks section and you have these different sections here for, let me close this out. You have these different sections here, all right, where you have the ratings, odds, power ranks, uh, you know, winner picks, underdog value picks, all those stars. And of course, the point spread and prediction percentages, hot trends and recommendations and odds. This is what we were looking at on the performance trend builder, right? So here, when it says buy recommendation, the performance trend tool is going to be looking at which are the teams that were recommended and placed in the recommendation and odds section of the VIP pick. So if it was that specific team that's uh, mentioned on the money line, and if that's the type of bet that you're looking for, then that's the team that will be selected. Okay, so buy recommendation is what that means. Game winner picks. Now here what happens is the system will calculate the winnings based on the game winner pick. That's the number of stars that we see here. Okay, you can see the number of game winner stars for each game in the team description block. Uh, and that's usually displayed as orange stars. Now the game winner stars indicate how much of a probability there is for the favorite to win a game. And the star ratings usually range between 0.5, that's half a star, to five stars. So the more stars you have, uh, the more it shows a higher winning probability for that team. And a bet will be placed on the favorite if the game winner stars meet or satisfy the minimum cutoff value that you choose um, in the settings. All right, so if any of the games have game winner stars, then the game will be included in the backtest result for further analysis. By the way, you can control the probability cutoff just by adjusting the stars count in the trend builder settings or on the next page of this wizard. You'll have other options that are similar to this and we'll take a look at that. So this is the game winner pick which is associated with the favorites. Now very similarly we have the same thing for the underdogs and you have the underdog value pick. So if you select this option then it'll only focus on the underdog value picks depending on the number of stars, the minimum number of stars that you want the team to have, okay? Um, so that probability value, or basically the minimum value that you want is like a cutoff. This team must have a minimum number of stars in order for it to be considered uh, for the back test. Now, these three will usually focus, of course, they focus on the money lines but coming up to the next one you have over and under picks which of course means that you're focusing on the totals all right so for each of the games again you have over and under star ratings and this is usually shown under the green prediction percentage bar so you have the point spread forecast you have the totals which shows over 5.5, 59%, and then the number of stars. So the over and under value stars indicate the winning probability for totals, over or under, depending on the prediction, to win that bet. And again, the stars range from half a star to five stars. Uh, the higher the number of stars, the higher the probability of winning for that particular type of total bet. Uh, and a bet will be placed on either over or under if the value, that's the number of stars, 
uh, meets the uh, the minimum criteria that you go ahead and choose. So the, at the end of the day, you have the control over the cutoff as to how many stars there should be. In the same way, uh, just as you have for over and under picks, you can also choose to focus on games with only over picks that satisfy your criteria, or you could even choose games that focus only on under picks. And of course you have winning prediction. Now this one's a bit different. So for each of the games, the system calculates the win prediction percentage, and that's shown by this green prediction percentage bar. So in this case, a bet will be placed or simulated on the team uh, with the largest prediction percentage. All right, so that's how it goes for the winner prediction. This entire section, of course, like I showed you on the VIP picks page, will be to the left of each of the VIP picks. All right, now the last option is the Kelly criterion. And this is not exactly a bet type, but more of a staking approach, which means it has actually more to do with money management than it does with the prediction percentages themselves. However, many of our systems and tools do give you bet recommendations based on the Kelly criterion. So let's just take a quick look at you know, what the definition is. The Kelly criterion is a bet sizing technique which balances both risk and reward for the advantage gambler. It determines the optimal percentage of your total capital or the, basically your bankroll that you can bet on a single game or outcome. The most important thing to remember is that a bet will be placed only on the team with the highest Kelly criterion value. All right. Now there may be times when the Kelly criterion, the formula, might give you a value of zero or less. Okay, and if it's zero, that means that you should not be placing a bet at all. So this is also a good way for you to be able to avoid bets which might not have any good value later on. All right, so I'm going to go with the default, which is buy recommendation, and we are simply going to click next. All right, so here, now remember, because of the fact that I chose buy recommendations, I will have this entire list of options, which will be made available to me. And each of these will depend on the, the recommendations that I chose earlier. So you can view the recommendations of each of these games in the recommendations and odds section okay like i mentioned earlier uh, the bet place will be automatically determined depending on the recommendation meaning or definition okay so we're not going to go through each and every one of these but just for a quick read what you should know is the strong team or parlay or system play recommendations will lead to bets on the favorite team now this of course will happen on the money line uh, the next two are related to the spread line so negative point spread recommendations will lead to betting the handicap on the favorite team now obviously because it's a favorite team it's usually considered to have a higher score so negative handicap that's applied to the favorite team and vice versa where you have a positive spread or handicap that will be applied to the underdog team. So that's as far as the spread line goes. And then the next one talks about the over and under recommendations which lead to bets on over or unders. Of course that comes under the totals depending on the over under prediction percentage which were mentioned under the green prediction bar we saw earlier. Okay, so with this particular page, you can choose multiple options or filters. So each one of these options is going to act as a filter on the final output of uh, picks that will be selected or generated by this trend. Okay, so for now, I'm just selecting these and we are going to click next. All right, step four. This is just as important as well. This is about money management. Now, if you're just starting off, then it's always best to stick to what's known as fixed staking, which is where the stake on each of your bets is a fixed value and it doesn't change. But if you're an advanced better and you know how to basically increase your stakes or in time, that's known as progressive staking, all right? Now, the progression is very simply a change in the size of your bets, depending on the results of the previous bets. In contrast, a flat simply means, you know, fixed staking throughout. 
where the stake size remains the same irrespective of what the previous bet result is. The most popular type of progression is the simple progression. That's exactly what this is, which is, and you'll notice in brackets it says 1x, 2x, and 4x. Okay? Now what this means is, see, in a progression, usually you start off with a small amount. Let's say maybe, for example, $10 or $100. Okay, whatever your initial stake unit size is. And let's say you place a bet of $10, and that bet happens to lose. Now, in the case of a loss, what you do next is your next bet will be increased in size according to the factors or coefficients that you have listed here. So, 1x means, you know, your unit size. 2x means twice that of your unit size. So, in this case, if I started with $10, that's my 1x. 2x is $20. And if that second bet loses as well, then I move to the next one, just 4x, where it becomes $40. Now, in this case, if I win the bet with the $40 stake, then that's great. My profits will most likely cover my losses and I will have made a, a nice little profit for myself. But if I lose even the third one, then what you're going to do is you're not going to increase your progression any further. You'll simply reset it and go back to 1x again. Or one of the things that you can also do is possibly skip the next couple of bets so that you stay safe and then you get back into the game again or wait until the next day. So that's the usual approach with simple progression. And everything else here is quite frankly a, just a variation of that. So long progression here has four steps instead of three. So you have 1x, 2x, 3x, 6x. Uh, 1x, 3x. You have see so many of these variations here. And each of these are variations of the simple progression. But there are other types of progressions as well. I'm going to talk about that. So you have something known as the win streak progressions. And this behaves like the simple progression, but stops after three, four, five or more wins. Next is the up and down progressions, which basically ends with one win from the start of the progression or one win after a loss or after two wins. Then ABC or ABCD recoup. This is a progression run up to the first win, okay? Uh, but you calculate the second and next coefficient of progression to cover the previous loss. So every time you lose, what happens is your next bet will not only follow a certain coefficient or factor, but it's calculated in such a way that if you were to win that next bet, then the profits from that bet will also cover the previous loss that you had. All right, and then finally you have all in 5, all in 10, all in 15, all in 20, which basically means you run the progression to all wins or to the very first loss or right until the end. Now, many of these progressive staking approaches might seem a little complicated to you, but for the most part, our members usually follow either flat staking or the simple progression, uh, 1, 2, 4, or even this one, one, two, three is also very common. So let's say I go ahead with one, two, three X and four, depending on what type of recommendations. So here what happens is I'm using the team recommendations, which came from the recommendation section. Okay. Or do I go only with the team or do I go with the team recommendation uh, or do I just follow one progression for all? See, each of these terms here are also explained down here. And it says team only, the progression runs separately for each team. Recommendation only, the progression runs separately by each recommendation. And team recommendation, the progression runs separately by each combination of team and recommendation. And finally, one progression for all, which means run the progression by each combination of team and recommendation. Okay, so I'm going to basically apply this progression to the team recommendations. By the way, there's this option here which says count the same day games as the same progression step. Now, usually what happens is when you follow a progression, it usually applies to the games that satisfy your trend criteria within a day. And you want to be able to apply that progression within a day. Now, sometimes what happens is you may have games where the start time between the games might be a little too close. So it might be just, you know, an hour or two hours and or maybe sometimes the games might overlap so what happens is you don't know what's taking to apply to the next game until the result of the earlier game has already been announced 
right? So in that case, you have to wait at least an hour or two before you can get the solid result from the previous game in order to know what you should do with your next game, whether you should continue the progression. So to avoid such confusion, sometimes what you can do is you can simply consider games that occur on the same day as being part of your progression step. So let's say if you're, if you're already on the second step, that means the previous day you already had a loss, and today you're going to be staking with 2x, then all the games for that day will follow 2x as being the staking sites. You can also choose to apply this particular criteria which will ensure that you don't have games that overlap with each other so let's say for example I want to make sure that if I have two games that are separated by only half an hour or one hour from each other then I want to be able to w at least make sure that they don't overlap and let's say I consider games to be separated by at least two or more hours to be separate games so that I can follow the progression steps Okay, in that case, I'll uncheck this and allow this to happen. So you see, you know, there's so much you can do with just the progressions, progressive staking and the money management alone. For now, I'm just going to keep it simple. You know, I'm just going to follow this simple progression 1 to 3x on team recommendations and let's move forward. Okay, here is where we have filters based on the number of stars the type of statuses for each teams and the location whether it's home or away the number of stars indicates how high the probability of winning is just like we saw for the previous you know winner game value stars and even underdog value stars it's very similar to that and you can filter out games uh, or teams based on the stars count so if i want to increase this and let's say I, I want teams with a minimum of at least three stars and only three to five stars will apply and besides that, you also have these various statuses which you can choose. This way you can filter out teams that have certain types of statuses. And of course, these statuses are based on not only their star ratings, but also their power rankings and several other factors. It also indicates what their recent performance has been like. So statuses that say dead, dead, up or ice cold, these statuses usually indicate that the teams are doing too well and if it's down or up it simply means that their ranking is either moving up or down based on recent performances or recent games the same goes for the underdog as well now usually for the location we accept all games but if you want to be really specific you can choose to limit it to home only or away only all right so you definitely have quite a few criteria that you can apply here. Moving forward, let's go ahead and take a look at the next step, step number six, which is select the odds and price filters. So just like how you can filter out teams based on their, you know, their star ratings or their statuses, you can also filter out games or matches based on the odds values that are available to you. Okay, so if you want games or teams that fall within a specific odds range then you can apply that here so this applies to the favorites the underdogs and this will apply to the spread line and of course you have the tie odds as well and all of these odds by the way are expressed in european or decimal odds by default um, so if you don't know what european odds are just take a look at this explanation or you can always email us and we'll give you a detailed explanation of how to use those odds. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Here is where you can filter out the games based on the win prediction percentage, which is calculated using our own proprietary algorithm. You can see the win prediction percentage for each of these games on the VIP picks page. Remember I showed you the green percentage bar before? So that's the prediction percentage bar. So you can actually filter out games based on certain ranges that you want. So let's say I'm interested in the favorites winning, but I only want games where the favorite has at least 75 to 100 percent. Okay, this is in terms of the prediction. That is our systems calculate the winning prediction percentage for that specific team. 
these two will apply to the money line then you have the spread line and of course the for the totals as well okay moving forward now you have the power ranking delta okay so this is important because this is one of our proprietary calculations or rankings that we developed for teams to be able to tell what their current condition and the power of the teams are and all that's based on our own calculations and internal system indicators and just like how you can view the star ratings for each of the teams you can also view the power rankings on the VIP picks page as well as on the power rankings page um, and this will tell you how the power of a team changes over time um, and also it helps to predict future games based on the power rankings so here what happens is you have the option to be able to filter out teams or games basically where there is a certain difference in the power ranking that's what's indicated by the word delta wherever you see the word delta it means a difference of so if I select this that means the system will only consider games where the power rankings between the teams that there is a difference of at least 10 so let's say I don't want it to be 10 I maybe I want a delta or difference of only 5 between the teams so I can go ahead and do that now just as how you can apply this this is for the power rankings delta you have power rankings with the sine delta which means it takes the the sine into consideration when you calculate the difference uh, this applies to the underdog favorite or favorite minus underdog and then you have the standings delta okay now standings is the current position of a team in the standings table of the appropriate league that they're in and just like that we also have team stability which is a coefficient that represents how stable a team is when they're winning as the favorite it also means you know if a team has been often designated as a favorite how well do they perform as a favorite throughout that particular league or championship so if they're stable enough as a favorite when I say stable so they either consistently win as a favorite or consistently lose as the underdog so even here you can apply what's known as a standing delta and also a stability factor a head to head head to head delta is the difference between the number of team wins and the number of wins of the opponents in head to head games for these teams so as you can see you know you've got tons of options and filters that you can apply to both sides the teams as well as in terms of their rankings so this turns out to be a very very useful thing to apply as well moving forward we have the market trend filters now this is a very interesting concept when you're sports betting you will often notice that there are periods where the underdogs seem to dominate and they tend to win more games than the favorites or even the other way around where it might be a favorite market where the favorites tend to win more games than usual and if you were to bet on the underdog during a strong favorite market then you're very likely to lose and in the same way just as let's say for example if you were to bet on favorites during a strong underdog market then that's like a sure road to failure and no matter how good your system is they're just simply not going to win enough of games for it to be of any value by default it usually means we're okay with either of the markets but if you've chosen uh, filters and criteria in the previous uh, steps which tend to pick only favorites or pick only underdogs then you might want to consider this particular step very closely as well because it pays attention to whether you're in a favorite market or if you're in an underdog market and here this last one is a very cool option which basically allows you to consider a, a market trend value but it's calculated separately so instead of it being spread across an entire season it's calculated by each league separately uh, but this particular option is only applicable to you know certain sports okay so we're going to just leave that at any trend and move on to the next okay so here we have a specific page dedicated to just the Kelly criterion if you want to filter out your games based on the Kelly criteria that are calculated for the teams that are chosen then you can use this as a filter as well so you can apply this 
to the favorites or this to the underdogs. And finally, coming to the last filter step. This is important because it also allows you to avoid certain matches and games and to choose when not to bet. So you can choose not to bet during the first two weeks of each regular season. You can choose not to bet during the preseason or, you know, don't bet during the playoffs or, you know, skip the top 10 of the most public games. And okay, so these last two options are also interesting. So let's say, for example, you've been betting uh, consistently and, you know, you've noticed that um, after a certain number of wins, uh, you tend to immediately have a loss after that. Okay, so let's say, for example, you have five wins in a row. And after those five wins, usually what you've noticed is that the next two bets turn out to be a complete disaster. And you want to avoid that. So this is something that you can actually use in order to make sure that you avoid losing after you've had a winning streak. And in the same way, just as how you had a winning streak, you can even have losing streaks. So let's say, for example, you notice like, you know, after three losses in a row, your next one or two picks tend to be losses as well. You usually have like a string of losses. So to avoid that, you can skip the next two bets in order to avoid, you know, losing again. So hopefully after a string of five bets in total, after the fifth bet, the next one might turn out to be a win instead. So these are ways by which you can attempt to avoid losses based on the probability that you see in the patterns of your own betting. This is actually a pretty valid one, so I'm going to be leaving that on just for the heck of it. And yeah, maybe don't bet on the playoffs or preseasons, just for the fun of it. So let's click next and we are going to be reaching the end this is the final page this is where you finally create the trend based on all of the filters and options we saw earlier okay and as soon as i click finish here what's going to happen is your new trend will be created and immediately you'll also be presented with a complete analysis of the trend starting with it's you know summarized statistics so here we have a summary of this particular trend that we randomly created. Remember, I mean, just for the purpose of demonstration, I randomly chose some of those options. And of course, it doesn't look like it's a great trend because <laughs> we have this profit graph that's, you know, leaning all the way down, downward trend. That's not what we like. Of course, but you know, it takes a while before you can fine tune some of the options, select the ones that will yield the best results for you and Sooner or later, you'll be able to arrive at a really good trend that gives you good profitable results in the long term. But what I wanted to show you here in the summarized section is, first of all, the win rate percentage that's shown here. Then, of course, you have the ROI, which is the return on investment and the trust factor, which basically tells you whether the back test, whether it's trustworthy over the long term or not. And so many other statistical calculations here. The winning streaks and losing streaks are also shown here as well. So this is also pertinent information for those of you who love this kind of data. Now, you notice after we chose all those options, as I scroll down here, notice that all those options were selected for me. So whatever you do on the wizard is immediately reflected here on the main performance builder tool itself. Okay, that's right at the top and right at the end here. Now these buttons are some of the most important buttons and functions that, let's say for example, if I were to make any changes here, let's say randomly, okay, this doesn't apply because one that I uh, selected was for NHL. Uh, let's say that and maybe I just add these additional options or whatever. All right, and let's say I make some changes to whatever my settings are. I want to be able to process it. So you click process on either of these buttons, okay, or even this process button here. And as soon as you do so, it'll recalculate the back tests based on your modified settings and display it to you. Now, like I said, you'll be presented with not only the summarized details for the back tests, 
but also a complete analysis of the trend and all of that is way down here if you scroll down further you'll find full backtest details this basically shows you the last few games or matches for this particular trend that generated these picks now like so if there are too many games to scroll down through you can just simply use the down button again click this and this will take you straight down to the profit graph section all right so here's where you have the profit graphs for this trend across various time periods such as the total net profit the previous season and the current season the last 30 days if you scroll down further you get a highly detailed table with full statistical summarizations for this trend so for those of you who love crunching numbers and stats this backtesting tool is like a dream come true so just go ahead and knock yourself out let's go back up and up again and back up here which will take me back to this important section okay so this is really important because besides the process button the edit and share settings are similar to this share option that we saw earlier now when you click this what this does is it immediately let me just close this out so i can show you this to you gives you this text box with a complete list of all the parameters and values for this trend that you created these are literally the internal settings for this particular trend Oh yeah, and by the way, one thing that's really important is once you're done with creating a trend and if it turns out to be a, a profitable one, you will want to save that again. So make sure you save it. You can override it, of course. Okay, right. And more importantly, if you reach the point where you have developed a really profitable trend and you want to get it validated and checked by our ZLab team, instead of copy pasting this whole thing and emailing it to us you can simply click this button here which says share trend to zlab and in here you can type in your ideas mm, let's say you know i'd like to so you can share your, your ideas or your suggestions and recommendations with our zlab team and along with that will be attached the settings of the current trend that you just created so as soon as you click this your trend and submission will be sent to our zlab team internally this makes it very convenient so you don't have to email anything to anyone everything is done internally uh, and submitted directly to the zlab team itself oh and by the way if you happen to have you know settings and later on if you want to be able to load that you just simply click load new settings and it'll reload whatever you pasted back in there all of the settings in the performance trend builder will be modified based on what you pasted back into this field okay so the next button is open a new window so this is if you really like how your trend looks and you want to be able to basically open it in a new window so you can analyze it better you just simply click this and it'll open the entire thing for you in a brand new window now the last two buttons are just as important this is if you want to be able to go through all of the backtest data and you can export that data and analysis to excel or to csv for your own future reference okay so these are all the main options and functions i wanted to show you in our performance trend builder um, and there is so much more to this tool honestly but yes i hope you get to see now the kind of power of and convenience that's available to you especially if you're an advanced sports better and you want to be able to you know create design or fine-tune system trends of your own and don't forget you can also choose to receive signals from the very systems you create using this tool if you have any questions about the performance trend builder or any of the backtester tools for that matter please feel free to email our tech department at this address that's tech support at zcodesystem.com so finally We'd like to encourage you to create your own systems using the Performance Trend Builder, experiment and test out your own ideas, and see how other profitable trends work too. And if you find your own winning settings, just submit them to ZLab to have them validated and then automated so that you can follow your own system picks 
and even share them with the rest of our amazing Z Code community. That's it for now, folks. You take care, and we'll see you soon on the inside.